Got a sweet little chili pepper XJ dropped off at my house while I was at work. Let's see why she's here. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I had a reverse theft. This, uh, this Jeep magically appeared in my driveway while I was at work. Usually people steal stuff from you when you're not around. I got a delivery when I wasn't around. So this is cool. We're gonna take a look at why this Jeep is here. No, not because of that little damage. Something a little more sinister. Uh, let me know if you guys have ever seen one of these happen. Take a look at this. Up under here. Take a look at our harmonic balancer. It's uh, pretty good from there. there. There is no belt on it, so uh, that's a little problem. But take a look at it a little closer. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it is separating itself. The rubber connection that, uh, I guess, that dampens the vibration, the dampener, harmonic balancer. It, uh, it's cracked. It's wearing off. You can see can see this rim how far it is actually ejected now we're gonna have to pull this off with a puller but the only problem is there's not a lot of room to work with in here so what I think I want to do is I want to remove the bumper because this part of the unibody has a nice opening here this will allow me to get to this harmonic balancer I'll be able to pull it and tap a new one on without anything in the way except for this trans line and we'll see if we could access this this pulley so all right let's take off the bumper conveniently i already lubed these bumper bolts they're down here i shot a little bit of penetrating oil there they are one two <laughs> i could barely see them and the third one is in the frame rails it's like uh it's up in there so hard to see, but it's there. So loosen up those bumper bolts. We'll take a 15 millimeter impact and uh, the heads of them. Let's see. Sorry for the angles. It is a tight squeeze in there. There you can see the one, two, and the third one is down there. I'm going to try to take off this bumper. Uh, also, we have to disconnect those two 10 millimeters that hold the bumper ends on to the fender. And then this baby's just gonna slide right off. So this is the project at hand. We're gonna take off this harmonic balancer. When the engine's outside the vehicle, it's a good time to do the balancer. Let me show you the beach Jeep engine I'm building. Yes, that's right, the beach Jeep is not dead. I'm still working on it. I'll show you that uh, right now. So here is a 4.0 outside of the Jeep, and it is much simpler to get to the pulley. You just take out this screw right there. That bolts to the crankshaft, and you go ahead and you wiggle this guy out right there. They got a brand new harmonic balancer. These things have some weight to it. And you go ahead, take the new one, slide it on in, give it a couple taps. I usually use a block of wood and a three pound sledge. Screw this bad boy back on, like so. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> Easy, in theory. But we got all that stuff in our way to make it difficult. And a new belt. It's a great time for a new belt. So yeah, let's, uh, let's take off the bumper. Yeah. Fender must be extremely rusty because, yep, the bolt came out <laughs> without being undone. That sucks. All right, this bumper is hanging on by a thread. This is the time that I would say make sure your vacuum ball is disconnected. There is no vacuum ball, so. And that right there is what we want to get to. Now, if you had a vacuum ball, it should mount right here. And these are the screw holes. The vacuum ball sits right here. There's one vacuum tube that plugs into it. This one hello. does... Hello. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this one does not have a vacuum ball in the proper spot. Mike has a WJ vacuum ball. His vacuum tube was 
broken, so I grabbed this form off the Green Hornet. And we just plugged it right in there and uh, tucked that out of the way. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Mikey, you don't have a fan shroud. That could be dangerous. You could chop stuff up. Oh, yeah, look at that. Chopped up the overflow tank. This overflow tank is useless without the tube. Oh, yeah. We'll see if we can fix that for him, too. All right. Let's get down to work. All right. Zip out this bolt. This goes right into the crankshaft. This is a 19 millimeter. Oh. That was a little bit looser than I thought. All right. That's out. All right, crank bolt is out. Now we're gonna hook up our puller. This is a nice snap-on CJ2001P set. Uh, Andy gave me this set. Actually, I don't know if he gave it to me. He let me use it, and I still have it. So sorry, Andy, and thank you. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hook up our puller. Uh, I got another pulley over here that we're gonna use to match up these threads. I think it's these because. I've used these a lot, so it could be these. Yeah, that's got to be it. Let me see if I can get you guys a thread. So if you want to make your own pulley out of something, I don't know, plate of steel and other hardware, this is just a, what is it? Yep, that's a 5 16 by 18 thread. If you want to make yourself your own pulley bolts, get yourself some nice hardened hardened steel bolts i can't do this with one hand you know i try all the time to show you guys uh while filming giving you the best shots possible let's see so this is that's about uh three and three quarter long bolt and the threads go to about three quarters so yeah you can make yourself a nice pulley system the only thing is well I don't know, you're going to need a plate and a big bolt to pry on that. It might be easier just to buy yourself a set. I'll put a link in the description for you. Yeah, that's what you should do. Okay, let's prepare this thing. There we go. We got our three bolts in the puller with the big center threaded in. And it's got a nice little punch there, that little tip will center up nice and neat inside the crankshaft. And then when you tighten down the side bolts, then you could tighten down the center bolt. That should pull it out. You wanna make sure you thread it in nice and deep, but you don't wanna go too far because you don't want to puncture. Let's see, can we see this? There is a soft piece of aluminum there. Uh, it actually looks like gunk, but that is your timing chain cover. You don't want to puncture your timing chain cover. So be careful how deep you thread this sucker in. We got our pulley set up. Those screws aren't too deep. I was able to able to tuck my finger back here and feel and they're not poking through the pulley. So that is good. It's got enough meat on there to pull it out without stripping these bolts. I have used this quite a bit of times. So let's crank down on this and see what happens. All right, I'm at the point where the crank is turning now. And there we go, we're gonna utilize this hole right here. We're gonna hook it up to the impact. Take it out nice and slow. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, uh. Oh, and if you're wondering how that hole got there, this, uh, this step bit is the secret to the success. Yeah, just kind of punch it in right through there. I'm making the best noodles ever. You're making the best noodles? Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's find you some water so you can make mud noodles. Here is the old balancer, and this is shite. Shite? <laughs> Look at that. Came right apart. This stuff in here is rubber, and it gets old, so yeah. Keep an eye on these things, guys. 
when you see the rubber start to crack, it's garbage. Garbage. All right, that cavity in there, you want nice and clean. I wiped it down as best as I could, hit it with some brake clean, and now I'm gonna go after it one more time with some WD-40, and then we'll slide on the new balancer. So the new part we got here is Harmonic Balancer, Dorman part number 594-018. Let's open it up. Nice, nice, flat black, and that's what you want. All right, want to line up the notch right here. This takes all the guesswork out of the timing. We don't need to reset the timing whatsoever. It's just a quick, simple plug and play. The camshaft is already in line. So, uh, I'll wiggle that on as best as we can. Danny, you dumped dirt all over me. It's okay. All right, so there it is. It's Technically, it's on. I'm gonna get a nice two by three block of wood. I'm gonna tap this on all around here, nice and gently. We'll get this thing to slide right over where it should be. All right, here we go. We got our, this is actually a two by four. It's about 20 inches long. Center this up as best I can. Give it a couple love taps, just like that. It's not the most technical, but it gets the job done. So. All right, there we go. Looking down, we got about a sixteenth of an inch to go. We want to make sure that the pulleys are all in line. You can see that uh, we're not quite there yet. Now, sometimes people will crank this on with that bolt. I'd rather wait till the last minute to torque that bolt on. The bolt isn't really for tightening the pulley on. You don't want to strip your crankshaft. So let's tap it a little bit more, see what happens. All right guys, that pulley is looking pretty good. Let's crank this bolt on. Cranking it by hand. The only problem is you're going to run into the resistance of the bolt is going to overcome the force of the crank. So that's a good thing. We know his engine turns nice and smooth, but I'm going to hit this with the impact gun a little bit just to torque this on a little more. The impact gun doesn't put any rotational force on it, which is pretty cool. There we go, right through that same magic hole we made. Just going to give a couple taps. Couple of good duggas. Don't need to go crazy. Quick check. Bolt is on. The crank still spins freely. Oops, it's getting tight. Nice, good compression. All right. Now we got to go ahead and put on the belt. You know what? Before the belt, I'm gonna see if I have a fan shroud for them. This will cut your fingers off. Let's see what I can do for you. Woo! Afternoon delight. Whoop. There we go. Just uh put on a brand new fan shroud found this in the backyard it had a little crack so I plastic welded it back together I also found a nice WJ 4.0 engine overflow tube and I ran it through its factory holes and it is looking good I had to shorten it up a little bit because it was about yay big so made a nice custom fit with WJ parts I also went ahead and fastened his battery back together to get the shroud in, I did loosen up all six of these header panel bolts. It gave me just enough wiggle room to wiggle this back and jam this in without cracking it again. So now I'm going to thread on the belt and I'm going to get started with that by loosening up this tensioner over here. So far so good. We're getting there, Mikey. All right, well, silly me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's much easier to get to the belt tensioner pull you got to loosen that up and then you could loosen up this this is what puts the tension on it but this won't move unless this is loose uh, and you can't get in there with the fan shroud in the way so I got all fan shroud happy with this one and ironically I had to take this one out and then I went ahead and looped on the new belt 
I like to start way down there at the alternator pulley and then you come up one side goes around this pulley the other side goes around that pulley and then they both go down the south side goes around the harmonic balancer and look at the top side goes around the water pump and then they both converge around the power steering pulley and of course the tensioner goes over yonder and you tighten this down you want this thing to uh I don't know, maybe a quarter inch deflection, if you will, if that's even uh, the appropriate manner. That's what I do. And then you tighten this back down. Um, before we put the fan back in, we're gonna start it. Do the old moment of truth. Dang it, battery. All right, we're gonna jump it. All right, there you have it. Of course the battery was dead. Eh, just my luck. But we got a jump on it, started, and uh, it is running pretty smooth. Not bad for a 4.0 with 250,000 miles on it. Looking good. Oh, hey, Jojo. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna button this thing up, put the bumper back on, and get it ready for Mike. He should be on his way. All right, one last look before Mike comes. We got ourselves the new fan shroud. Put in a new overflow hose, looking good under the hood, as it should. <laughs> and let's see what else I did. Mike, I hope you appreciate it. I found a, a grill and some headlight doors that match. Gave it a little shine. Shined up your bumper ends. I used the flame trick. I also found you a new lower valence. And I also got you a replacement bumper end. This one is not smashed, so you are good to go, Mike. I love the way that looks. And a fun fact, that lower valence used to be on beach jeeps. I did my best to scratch off the uh, silver paint, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I missed a few spots. There you go, Mike, you got a beach jeep part on your jeep. And uh, man, I love chili pepper red. I'm not a red fan, but if I ever had a red jeep, it would be chili pepper. I love it. Looks good. Comment down below if you like chili pepper. And I think the black and red sets this off thing really nice. So, all right, Mike. Hope you enjoy it. See you in a little bit. There we go. That's it. All right. Here we go. Started the XJ up because it's cold out. It's freezing out. I, well, apparently not everybody's frozen. What's up, Mike? <laughs> Mike's still it? rocking shorts and a t-shirt. That's the way I live. <laughs> so uh, I love the XJ, man. Uh, pretty, pretty clean ride. It is running like a top. Pretty good for 250? No, 200. 210, I think. Two, two something thousand miles. 20 years old. Yeah. More than 20. Like More than nine. 20. It's 25 years old. Um, still running great. I'm glad I could help you out getting that harmonic balancer in. So what's next, baby? What are we doing to this thing next? Lift kit. Lift kit. Disc brake conversion. Disc brake conversion. And anything else you want to do. <laughs> you need help doing it? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah, baby. You're the guy I go to. Go to guy. All right, guys. So we will see this XJ here in this driveway in the not too short future or soon future. Soon. I, got, Soon. I got the parts. We got the, we, yeah, we got the parts. We just need the weather. We just need the weather and the time. And the time. And then uh, this baby will be back. I love Chili Pepper XJs. Uh, they are awesome. About like a, it's like a one year, one and a half year color. They're so cool. They're so rare. And uh, Mikey's got one. So we'll see this baby soon to do a lift and a disc brake conversion for the rear. And yeah, that's it. Thank and anything you. else. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll dig around in my parts pile and see we'll, what I we'll can put things. on. Yeah, there'll be some things. Maybe a fender. Ooh, Maybe. Ooh, yeah, a little rust in there. I got it like that. Listen, I got it for free, so <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to complain. Oh, it was a free XJ! It was free. You can't complain. You can't beat that. That's a great deal. Yep. So, all right, guys. We'll catch you on the next project. Like and subscribe. Catch you on the next project. Like Peace. <laughs>
Thank you again. No problem, buddy. See you comment below. Comment below. <laughs> See you. Coming up to bed. <laughs>